Hey guys, I wanna do an update or review of the Loki Ghost R1 and the cooling inside this case now that I've had a chance to do some further testing with it. And we're also gonna review the Noctua NFA12 G2 fans. These are really cool. Uh, before we dive into it, I, just, I do wanna tell you that Loki did send me this case and Noctua did send me these fans and the cooler inside this case along with the other fans. Um, this case was not cherry picked at all. I did try to ask them for a specific number. They didn't send it to me. They just sent me the case just like they did everybody else. So <laughs> that's, uh, you know, that's how it is. But I like it a lot. I think it's a great case. I think the cooling performance is great. So first of all, I'm gonna dive into the fans. So these are the first generation NFA 12s. I've been using these for over eight years. Um, this fan in particular is a newer one. I did buy some new ones because I uh, got rid of the other ones with an AIO when I sold it and I bought some new ones. Um, so these are, I would say roughly six months old. So they're pretty fairly new. Um, but anyway, so if you look at the difference between the two, you can see there's quite a difference between the two fans and I will grab the case and just show it to you a little bit closer. There you go. So they overhauled them completely. I'm going to link their video in the description because it's really cool the differences between the two fans and all the things that they did. So in terms of RPM, the originals are 2000 RPM. These are 1800 and 1750. Now the reason there's a 50 RPM difference is for noise equilibrium, right? So they have a whole thing on the back of this uh, box and also in their video how having them next to each other on like an AIO having one spinning a little bit less um, creates a better noise balance it's actually pretty technical and it's pretty interesting so go ahead and check out that video but anyway um, another thing I wanted to talk about before I get into the temps and the testing and everything else is just the direction of flow within the case now if you didn't watch my original video so back here, there's an inlet um, that goes into the cooler, right? Or you can use it as exhaust. Right now I have it set up as intake here and pass through and then exhaust. So I'm doing a little bit of different testing um, in terms of what is gonna give me the best results. Um, so before I added two slim fans on top of the GPU, doing a rear intake with a side exhaust did give me the best results. Now, if you can imagine it, you have cold air coming directly from the back through the cooler and then exhausting out because you have the graphics card sitting here, which all the 5080s and 5090s, I think even the 5070s, uh, if you have a triple fan, have a pass through, right? And it's gonna blow hot air through here. And if it exhausts straight out, you're not gonna be blowing hot air into the CPU cooler. Um, but because I added these extra fans, it reduced the temperatures of the GPU quite a bit that I haven't really noticed a difference swapping it around. So anyway, I'm gonna play with it a bit more. But in terms of uh, hardware, I have a 9950X3D. I have not undervolted it at all. I wanna stress that on an X870 gigabyte board. Now, the temperature that I had on the original fans which with the same fan curve, right? I did run it through Time Spy Extreme. I did one test and then I did a second test. The first test to get everything warmed up. Second test is what I took as the reading. Um, with the original fans, even though they spin at a higher RPM, they were also noisier than these. The first test with the originals was 75 Celsius uh, for the CPU. And then with the new fans, they're noticeably quieter. Like I can't even hear them because they're spinning at a lower RPM and it was only one Celsius higher, um, but they are much quieter. And it, they talk a lot about the efficiency of these and everything in their video. They also have a higher static pressure because these fans are meant to be more on a fin stack or against a radiator. Um, you can utilize them as case fans, but you know, they're more meant for that because they build a nice static pressure. Um, this one is pressed against a fin stack, so uh, it did create a bit more efficiency with that at a lower RPM, which is really incredible. I didn't think they could make a quieter fan, to be honest with you, but they did. So I think that's really, really cool. 
Um, when I added these 15 millimeter fans, so if you watch my original video, I had a Zotac Solid uh, OC5080. I broke two of them. The locking tab on the 12 volt high power, you know, upon removing the power cable, snapped off twice on me. So I ended up just going with an MSI Gaming Trio OC. So that's the card that's in here. And I have enough room and I added these uh, 15 millimeter fans and I can fit my, you know, whole finger. That's probably like half an inch, right? So the temperatures were, what I write here? So they were 72 on average with a high of 77 on the high spikes, right? And it's now 68 to 71 Celsius, which is quite impressive. Um, we're talking a four to six Celsius difference, right? So I thought that was really cool. And the temperatures inside this case are really, really good. Um, I did have a chance to run my whole setup um, with the previous card to kind of get an exact measurement of open air versus inside the case because I had an end case M1 and the card didn't fit in there. So I ended up running it open air until I got this new one. And the temperature difference from open air to being inside the case, I noticed maybe like a two to three Celsius difference, uh, which is really good actually. Um, because I had a Form D T1, which I saw like a 10 Celsius difference. And then the N case M1 was maybe like six to eight Celsius different uh, from open air. So this case is really efficient airflow wise. And I think it's a really nice case. Um, so yeah, and then this is the D15 G2, uh, which is a great cooler for 9950X3D, especially if you're not undervolting it. Um, and then in terms of some updates with the case and you know getting a chance to play around with it, I like it a lot. I think it's pretty easy to build and put together. Um, there are some crazy tight tolerances on this, which is really, really hard to do. Um, I used to do steel fabrication and welding many, many years ago. So I have an understanding of working with metal and machining and it's quite impressive the tolerances that they have on this, like this top panel, um, you know, how flush it sits. It's like, there's no gaps here. Obviously it's hard to see on camera, but there's like almost no gaps. It's like pretty impressive. Um, when I first built the case, I did have like some touching of the side panel, like on one of these sides. Um, and then I ended up just loosening this and adjusting it and then everything fit perfectly and I don't have any like weird heights or anything like that. So they did a really good job in terms of the tolerances on this. Um, some of the things, if you did watch the previous video, um, I did get a chance to speak with Loki about it. Um, after the fact, um, one of the things that came up was just the shipping packaging originally, right? So some people ended up getting shipping damage because it just wasn't sufficient which was very unfortunate because it's a very costly mistake. Um, but now they do have a manufacturer making proper packaging for these cases. So when they come out with another batch, you shouldn't have that issue and you shouldn't worry about it, um, which is really good. Um, I do believe that they're gonna make some other small revisions to the case itself as well, um, which will be very welcome. And I think that'll be really cool depending on what they decide to do. Um, I think the discoloration of the button was one thing that stood out to some people that got the case. I like this personally. I think it's much easier to see the button because um, if it was just fully flush, you know, obviously you would know where it is, but at least, you know, late at night or something, you're tired and you want to load up Netflix. I don't know. Like you can just see the button easily to me, you know, it's kind of like a happy accident. <laughs> so I like it. Um, and then I wanna show the side here, just so you can kind of get an idea of what it looks like with the side panel on. And I think it looks really good. And I like the construction quality of it. The finish feels really nice to me. Um, I do know that Loki is planning on making more of a budget version of this case. Um, I don't know what that fully entails, right? I do know that the finish is going to be different because the finish and the anodizing is very expensive and it's very difficult to do and there's a lot to be done with it versus doing, you know, like a paint or some other type of finish. I don't know what they're gonna do yet. I just know that they will make a more uh, cost-effective version of this, which I think is really nice because it gives people the opportunity to use, utilize a case like this that can fit such large components and not have to pay the, the premium price for it, right? 
Um, you can fit up to a 345 millimeter card up to four slots. So that would be like the Gigabyte Gaming OC. That thing is a four slot card and it's like 345 millimeters. So it'd be like just right in there. I was looking at getting that card between this one and that one, but I know Gigabyte has like the thermal paste uh, overrun on them on all the, you know, VRAM and everything else. So. I was just like, yeah, I don't really want to risk that. So I decided, you know, let's just do MSI. It also gives me some flexibility if I want to test some other cases in the future that, you know, utilize a two and a half slot. So anyway, that's why I did that. But overall, I really like the case. I think it's really nice. Um, some other things that I've, you know, been reading about, um, there's been a few isolated cases, um, if you have heard about it or not. Some people have had some issues with some clearance on the D15G2. I don't have a problem with it. There's a lot of people that don't have an issue with it. Um, but for that, if it is something that you have heard, I think there may be some inconsistencies with the heat pipe height on some of these D15G2s. Potentially, I don't know. Um, and then I do think it also has to do with the motherboard itself as well. I think that some of the motherboards uh, maybe pushing out a little bit higher um, in terms of like the mounting position in comparison to um, like these like I have an x870 gigabyte pro ice so I don't have any clearance issues but like let's say somebody's using an asus it might have a higher um, standoff so you know that is something but I've only seen a few cases of that so I haven't seen very many but Overall, I think it's a great case. I really like it. The fact that you can fit a D15 G2 in here is pretty nuts. Um, <laughs> and you just have massive airflow. Um, I would say this is probably my second air-cooled build and I'm very impressed with it. Um, you don't have to worry about your AIO failing or you know, have to worry about it leaking for some reason because you're cramming the hoses in all, you know, very tight and they end up being kinked or whatever the case is. Um, I think my first air cool build was the shuttle PC. If you are old enough to remember that, uh, you used to just throw the Intel cooler on there and it was good to go. Um, but everything else that I used was AIO just because it was too hot and there just wasn't any sufficient air coolers for those CPUs at the time. So this is great. I think this really puts a different perspective on, you know, what can be done in a small form factor case. The size is not crazy. It is a little bit larger than, you know, a Terra for sure, but you can't run a 9950X3D in a Terra. Um, even the small form factor coolers like the, uh, was it the Thermal All Right, the APX 97 uh, or whatever it is, uh, all copper cooler is not like the TDP of this chip is too high for that. So, you know, you could undervolt it and try to get it to work, but then you're really choking out performance on it. So this allows you full performance, allows you not to deal with undervolting and you can just go ahead and utilize it, which I think is really cool. So. That kind of sums it up for the video. Um, I do think that Nocto did a great job on these fans, uh, the new ones, these are the old ones. These are still fantastic fans. Um, I don't know if they're going to discontinue these or not. Um, if they do, they may run a sale on them and I would just buy them up, guys. You know, let's show Nocto some love. Um, I do like this color, some people don't, but I think it looks like espresso or like a, a latte or something. I don't know, I like it. So anyway, that'll do it for this video, guys. If you have any questions at all or want to know more about this case or want to see me run some different testing or anything like that, feel free to comment and ask. I will answer as many questions as possible and I'll try to do as much testing as I can if there's anything else for me to do. I don't have some of the equipment that let's say Gamers Nexus has, so I can't be as detailed as them. And this is more of a hobby for me. So anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video.